So there's one entrance here. Yes. And that means you come in this door, dignitaries come in this door, and your kids come in this door. That's right. So what do you what do you do? I mean, you do well, there's always a, a plethora of shoes down there, and, and uh, running shoes and hockey sticks, and we moved them today. But there's usually a lot of junk there that before people come, we have to come through because I'm sure not like your kid children, mine leave everything just dumped in backpacks at the front door. So you have to actually plan before a big formal event. Yes, we've Things actually get taken care of. And we've even had my so many shoes one day. My husband came home and the door wouldn't even open because it was stuck, <laughs> and he had to go around through the back door. So, and he was, and then I came out and threw all the shoes out on the front driveway. So, and they had to. It was winter, so it was cold. So they had to go home with cold shoes. You know what? <laughs> I think most Canadians would be relieved to mm. know that the the closet that we all have yeah. in our house is where you it's have in exactly yours too. Exactly the same. That's right. And then we come into this beautiful foyer. It's yes. a lovely foyer. Yes. Did you choose the art because it's remarkable? No, I didn't choose it. We got. I mean, we had some paintings here that had to go back to the owners that had been here a long time. So. Uh, we got you know some different options, and I love Ted Harrison. Mm -hmm. I think he's wonderful, and we actually got to have him here uh, wow. to see where his his paintings were. So, and he gave a little lesson in painting to my daughter's uh, oh, class. Wonderful. I know they studied him for a couple weeks, and then they got to come here. and And Ted Harrison, he inspires children. They love his art, so I love it. And there's something from each province and territory. And there's nobody that comes in here and doesn't notice those paintings. Well, they light up a room. They do. Yeah. They really do. He was a teacher, in fact. As yes, far he was. As, and then he, he saw an ad in a paper and came and accepted a job in um, the, the, in the Yukon. Yukon. Yes, yes. So he is, I mean, I think one of the most famous Yukon artists. And, and I just, and he's a great personality with great stories. So he kept the children amused for hours with his stories. That is worth its weight in gold. That's right. <laughs> And so when you have people who come here to the house, um, you have the dignitaries will, will come in through the, I mean, do you have people who come yeah, to I mean, the house? Yeah, not or? as many as you think, because yeah. when you're in a parliamentary system, the governor general does so much of the entertaining. I mean, the, the president of the United States has to do the two jobs. I mean, they have to do, you know, they're the chief executive and the, and the, uh, the head of state, so they have to do two. And we're lucky, because the governor general lives right across the street, so he does all, you know, the entertaining for most of the awards and, and a lot of dignitaries that come through. And then we do smaller, smaller things here. What does, what does that mean when you do smaller things? I mean, um, I mean we'll do, uh, like my husband will have, like he likes working dinners, working lunches and stuff like that, where you get work done and uh, leaves more of the, uh, you know, the entertaining things over. You know, at Rideau Hall is just much bigger and more set up set up with that so it, it works fine so we do the small more working dinners here and then the parties go on across the street i remember this floor as being black and white a yes. long time ago yes and that this was my favorite place to hide right well, under the stairs exactly when the children were little they loved to hide under there and then there's probably another little place that you probably hid to see the guests when you're little there's another little place up there that uh kids can sort of hide and and see what's what's going on without being seen but, and then they also try to go down the banisters, but we tried to stop them from <laughs> doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have heart failure the first well, time? Well, yeah, because they're, I mean, they, but as they get older, they get a little more adventurous. So, <laughs> so how have you taken, I mean, we've talked about the fact that you have to push the shoes out of the way because this is very much a, a home where kids live. Um, how have you taken a home that is quite formal and made it into... I suppose a residence that's formal, and then you've made it into a home for your family. Well, I think children, as you know, children don't care where they live. They they make it a home. There's toys. There's bicycles. There's there's uh, you know wherever kids are, they make it a home with their mess and their their bicycles and their toys and books and things like that. So I think that just happens when you move into a house and you have children, and then their friends come over. So I I think it's basically done for you by the children. Do you encourage that as well, like that their kids can, their friends come over and they... Yeah, I mean, they, they, they've grown up here in the neighborhood. All our friends are in the neighborhood. They went to public schools in the neighborhood. So um, there's kids coming and going here all the time. How about for you, though, as well? Because you moved, uh, you still keep a house in Calgary. Yes, I do. Yeah. So has this been able to be a home for you as well? Yes, I mean we have all our, our friends and family, and our we live, are part of a neighborhood in Calgary. And then we come here, and we have friends and family, and we're part of the neighborhood here. I think I'm very lucky. I get to live in. I know this will make people mad, but I get to live in two of the best cities in Canada. I think I love Ottawa, and I love Calgary, 
And so I get to live in two of the, the best cities. Are you, are you comfortable in being able to have your own friends for dinner here as well? I mean, do you have time to take away from the responsibilities and duties that you have on an everyday basis that oh, you share oh, with your husband? Uh, yes, of course. I got all of my girlfriends are in the neighborhood and different people. We volunteer on different things and stuff. So, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's not a problem at all. You have a guest book here. Yes. It's probably got some neat signatures. On yeah, it. there's all sorts of, I mean, I think we've got about seven or eight guest books. That's how many we go through in a year. In a year? In, or no, I mean, in, the, in since we've been here, yeah. we go through, I think there's seven or eight. They're, yes. they're all upstairs, which we will be, we will, will be keeping. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's um, presidents, prime ministers, um, you know, I, I think Jan Arden is in there making a snarky comment about my cat, called him fat, or my cat. So she, so there's all sorts of wonderful, um, but everybody who comes here, it doesn't matter if you're three years old or uh, 93, you sign the guest book. And that's what we tell little kids. The president or prime minister or the queen, they come, they have to sign your book. And you're so important that you have to sign the book. So that's how we explain to little kids. And then they get very excited and, and sign their names. Do you find that people are nervous when they first arrive here? Kids are never nervous. Kids, my friend has a daycare and she brings the kids over all the time. And they just, they know where the cookie jar is. They know where the animals are. They just come in and run. I think the parents at first are a little nervous. But once you're here more than, I always tell people, you know, if you're here more than once, you know where the fridge is, you can get your own drink. So the first time we're very nice and formal to people. The second time you're on your own. Let's talk about the changes that are made to the house. Because I was saying how when, yeah. when I was little, this floor was black and white. And um, more recently, but this was probably 10 years ago, the carpet was a leopard print. Yep. So when you come into the home, um, how much can you change yourself? How much can depend on you simply saying, I don't think I can live with that? Uh, not, not much. The NCC has wonderful decorators and people that are professionals to do that. So if I want to do decorating and things like that, I do it at my house in Calgary. So here, there, there's a team of professionals that, that take care of that sort of thing. And I mean, I guess if I really didn't like something, they would take care. But we change almost nothing. And there's a, a time they redo rooms at certain at certain times and replace carpets on like on a schedule so stuff is painted and you know so it's basically out of our hands right can you even suggest paint colors i don't know they they do a really good job like they're professionals and i'm and i always think no they do a great job so i'm happy to let the professionals do their job this is a beautiful room. It's filled with light. Is it a room that you actually use yourselves as a family? Well, not with the kids because there's no TV in this room and we all know kids, you know, why would teenagers hang around in here? My husband, we have a lot of parties in here because we, we move the couches back. We have a drum set in the basement we bring in and put in the corner. And so we have a lot of music in this room. So this is basically our music and party room. Okay, because it's this great room. Yeah. And then over here we have an amplifier and yeah. the piano yeah. and two electric guitars. Yeah. And we move the drum set. So you, But usually there's a drum set in the corner. Not a so great you have one, a yeah. full band. Yes, that. we could have. And then we have guitars. And so if somebody goes, oh, I, I didn't bring my guitar, we go, well, get another guitar. We have guitars, so yeah. There's wow. no excuses for no for me, no music in this in this room. Do the kids join in at these? Uh, um, my daughter is like me. She she doesn't do anything. My son plays guitar, but I mean, you know, he has his own music and stuff. So he, my husband, has plays with a group of friends, and they just have have fun. Do they actually have practices? Yeah, they, they, he was just here a couple days ago. The couches were all pushed back. And yeah, well, they, they just play and drink a few beers and, uh, and enjoy, enjoy the music. And you don't make them do this in the garage? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, but this room is a, is a perfect room. The acoustics are not too bad. And yeah. so we've had a lot of music. And it's opposite here because it's funny. Sometimes the kids are like, can you tell dad and his band to like be quiet? Like we're, we're trying to study or something like that. So it's the kids telling the parents to be quiet. Do you have celebrations in here? Do you celebrate Christmas here? Or no, we go to, um, to be in Alberta to be with, to be with friend, or family and friends. So, but we, before Christmas, we have parties and then I'll put, have a party for any reason. So birthday, somebody's 50th birthday, somebody's 51st birthday, you name it. Then we, we have, we love to have, friends and dancing and music. Okay, so that's your, do you prefer a more casual type of entertaining? Or? Oh yeah, like that's what, yeah. I mean, in uh, Alberta we have, like I have a fire pit out there, so we have fire pits and, and um, you know, sitting around the campfire with guitars and stuff. So that's sort of our entertaining. 
Do you ever get to welcome in guests to 24 Sussex who may also have an interest in music themselves and who end up you end up having yes we have we have people you know all the time we have people come over one of the the best ones we had the guys from Nickelback come over for pizza once and all the kids in the neighborhood heard so they were all waiting outside and were so excited to get their autographs and and talk to them and get brought guitars and had them sign them and stuff like that. So we've had, when the Junos were in Ottawa a couple of years ago, all the, the uh, artists came over and we had a big jam going on. And and so all the artists were were welcome and the kids were like, Dead Mouse was here, but he didn't bring his big head. So everybody wanted to see his head. So I think they were a little disappointed to see that he's a real human being instead of just the big head. So we, we any musicians are, are, we have a lot of fun and invite them over all the time. Every family has pictures. Um, not all of us display them particularly well, but you have great surfaces here for the uh, display of photos, and you do put photos out. You yep. have family pictures yep. everywhere. Yeah, well, I love photographs. I, I think at the end of your life, the only thing you care about is your photographs, and your and if your house was on fire, what would you save? Your photographs. Everything else can be replaced. So I love photographs, and I like to put them in every nook and cranny. And do the kids... Are they ever embarrassed? Like, yes, of course they hate it. it. So, like all children do. So, but I don't care. I do it anyway. Do you take them? Yeah, uh, most of them I have taken. But if people send me photographs that um, I like, I mean, some of them I handed somebody my camera and said take a picture. So, but uh, most of the ones in here are yes, I've I've taken them. I would imagine because I think people do this in any house you're in that when you have people come to visit, first of all. Family pictures make them feel more comfortable, but they're also a point of interest. You must have people who come over and do what I did and stare at all the pictures. Yeah, I mean, I would do it if I went to your house. Yeah. I would look at all your family photos too. I, I just love photographs and with the family and, and usually they're your happiest memories or your proudest moments. So I think that that's that's why we, we put them out. And it is our only part of the home that we do every, all the furniture, everything here is not ours and it's not, but it's our way of personalizing it. Right. How much of the entertaining in a room like this, or in the house in general, is your responsibility? I mean, do you, is there a sense that uh, you are the chatelaine and therefore... Well, yeah, I mean, you welcome people, make sure they feel comfortable and are, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, greet, we greet people at the door, get them to sign the guest book and make them feel comfortable. So I, I think that's my job to, when people come to my home, um, it's my job to make them feel as comfortable as, as can be. This would have seen some really fun dinner conversations, I have to imagine, this room. Yes, I mean, I, and there's more leaves. I think we can sit up to 28 people, and uh, there's been some fabulous times. And then I always also like to switch people around so people aren't um, staying the whole evening in one place. So every third person or whatever gets up and moves down. So we love to shuffle it around and have had some great dinner parties. And how big? normally are your dinner parties oh well that like it, they vary in size a lot of times they're just small we sit at this table behind us here just for four people like a, a leader and their spouse or whatever my husband does a lot of the little the smaller dinners in here also because there's such beautiful views of the ottawa river and but these are more um you know just different when there's more people and uh, so we have some great dinner parties, great conversations. Do you sit in here as a family? No. It's not like Austin Powers. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. I always yourself. think you'd feel pretty lonely and sad if you sat at either end. It'd be like, a, you know, one of those movies where, you know, pass the salt and you have to slide it down like curling rocks or something like that. But no, no, no. I, there, yeah, there's a little separate little uh, eating area um, just off the kitchen that, that, uh, that uh, we sit in as a family. So you don't even sit at this nice little small Sometimes table. I have lunch here or if I have lunch or whatever, but no, the, the our kids are teenagers. They want to eat and get off with their friends. So our time is in the morning, so we all have breakfast. That seems to be the only time we're all together is in the morning. So uh, we eat in the little, the little breakfast room, which is perfectly lovely. Is this the table that's been here for years and years and yes, years? Yes, it was just refinished a couple of years ago, and it is a lovely, that's why you can tell we have not, my children have not eaten here a lot, because you, you have little kids, they wreck everything, so this is kept lovely and it's refinished, so because it's hardly used, so that's why it stays so nice. It is a beautiful table. Yeah. And you know, the other thing that's incredible is the ceiling. Yes. The ceiling in this room is magnificent. It is, and I, we have to talk to a historian, but I think it's an original part of the, the only or, sort of, a, there's very few original features in this house, and I was told that the two chandeliers and this ceiling are original. 
but you'll have to check with your with your with our, ex, we'll experts. Do that. Yeah, maybe your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the art in this room, which yeah. is extraordinary. Yeah. Do you have any say over the art well, that's put out? Well, I mean, I from Southern Alberta, I like cows, even though this is a, a Quebec painter. Um, uh, we have a little bit of say. The Canadiana Fund brings paintings and people donate them, which is, is really nice. Um, carpets and dishes and stuff people can donate to the Canadiana Fund. And uh, so we have a little bit of say. Yeah. You have flowers and plants throughout the house as well. Are they from the Rideau Hall? Yes. Greenhouses? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you get to say, I prefer purple flowers or no I always just to say whatever's or... left over from the <laughs> governor general's parties we're, we're happy to take the only time I get specific flowers is I have a, a rescue cat named gypsy and uh, in the spring they have a hyacinth called gypsy queen and so they bring me flowers that are gypsy queens every spring but that's the only time I I get a, a special flower request this is a beautiful room. It just has the most magnificent view. Do you get to sit here? And All the laugh? time. Do you? This is the best room in the house, and it has a metal roof, so when it rains, it's the sound is beautiful. Wow. Do you, um, I mean, it would be incredibly private, which the oh. front is not as much. Yeah, the back is. yeah, exactly. And so this is totally private. You see the boats and hear the party boats and stuff like that. Sometimes the music's so loud, you get to dance along with the people. But especially in the winter, I mean, it's very quiet and you see the, uh, the ice fishermen across there. So that's always fun to watch and see how late they stay on the river in the spring, which I all the time think somebody's going to die. I totally agree with you. I see the huts and I think, what? first of all, why would you even try going yeah. out there? At this well, time? they walk right out to the I open know. river and fish into the open river. It's and crazy. I just, it's and they crazy. drive their trucks on it. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm crazy. always worried, but um, there's a few fish and shacks float on by in, in the spring that obviously people didn't, didn't uh, get off in time, but it's just generally fun to, to watch them out there. When you first walked in to 24 Sussex, had you been here before? I'd been here once before for, for a, a lunch. And uh, so until the day I moved in, I'd been here once. What did it feel like the day that you moved in? When well, you walked in and knew it was Well, dull? you're so, so tired because you've been packing. And I guess it's one of those moments, should be a bigger moment, but you're just so tired and stressed out. You don't get to enjoy it right away. And then you... Um, figure the significance maybe a few hours later and then you're you're worried or you know get my kids are my animals going to be okay here are they going to be eaten by the fox outside or different things like that so um you just are there's so many things but after a few hours you start to um appreciate it is it conducive to family life totally it's a wonderful house you talk to any of the the families that have lived here had have great memories of living in. I know it's a big old house, but it's very conducive to children and families. Do you really have a fox here? There's a fox in the, in the there is a vixen in the yard. Yes, there is a, a fox that runs back and forth between here and, uh, and uh, Rideau Hall. And there's a couple of skunks, a uh, family of groundhogs, and some chipmunks. Wow. Yeah, That's so there is a lot of animals here. So, and our cats stay inside, so they love to w watch the other animals through the through the windows. Good, especially yeah. the skunks. Yeah, Watch exactly, the skunks especially through the skunks. Yeah. But I've been sitting out there quietly reading and all of a sudden the skunk walks by. So you you don't, you don't think, oh, I can't step up and I thought it was gonna be a raccoon or something. And then all of a sudden the skunk walks right on by. So you hold your breath so you don't wanna scare it. <laughs> and so you actually do have the time to sit and read. Yes. You do yeah. you enjoy yeah. your house in yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like everybody else, you're, you know, you have your time and you, and you try to find a little place that's quiet time, so, yeah. It's a beautiful yard, I mean, at the back. It's just totally glorious. It really is. It's, it's, it's like living in a park. Do you entertain out here? Yes. Um, we have, you know, as you would know, we have garden parties all the time, and the garden parties are back here, and everybody gets to enjoy the view, and uh, you know, we're so close to the river, and the views are magnificent. A beautiful sunset every night. Is that right? Every single night there's a sunset because we, you know, we face the face west there, so it's just wonderful. And you said you have a fire pit. You were telling me you have yeah, a we fire, fire pit, pit over there and, and picnic tables and uh, tables and chairs. So um, we spend a lot of time sitting out out in the yard and, and enjoying it. And I have a little garden over there. You can see I have different plants growing and stuff. It's not a big garden, but um, 
I have a that you planted one. yourself? No, we well, what my the chef and I we yeah. plant and figure out what we're growing, and then there's a nice big garden at uh, at Harrington Lake that we. I was just checking out my potato plants yesterday, so hoping some of the little creatures. But you're fighting the creatures there that are that are going after your after your plants. Do you get to cook when you're at Harrington Lake? As opposed to yeah, I mean, here, or? like I like cooking out over a fire and stuff. That's right. always my my thing. So um, I'm not the best chef in the world, but I can um, cook over a campfire. That's 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 my best. That's what I do the best. I noticed that there was a, a volleyball back there. Yeah. So the kids obviously use yeah, this we area played badminton too. here. We have badminton yeah. nets, volleyballs, uh, volleyball courts. Uh, we have hockey nets, and so there's you know there's always some sort of sport going on the uh, basketball hoop so yeah there's always kids playing sports it's a beautiful garden do you tend it or no they, there's hopefully the you only, have someone the only who thing can... I planted here was there's some rhubarb back there um, when I uh, you know being from southern Alberta there's not a you know it's hard to get plants to grow it's, it's a lot of work so every settler and pioneer always had uh, rhubarb it's one of the earliest ways in the spring to get vitamin C and so you grow up and my grandmother had rhubarb all the time so when i moved here there was no rhubarb and i thought i can't live in a house without rhubarb so i thought i have to find somebody who is from southern alberta that lives in the neighborhood i know they'll have rhubarb so i was at a party one night and uh chief justice uh, beverly mclaughlin was at this party and i asked her i said do you have rhubarb and of, she, of course i have rhubarb she's from pincher creek alberta of course she has rhubarb so i went over there with a bucket and uh and a shovel and dug up so that is the Beverly McLaughlin rhubarb. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, we had a little plaque. I think it's fallen down now, but we even have a little plaque that says the Beverly McLaughlin rhubarb. And do you make things with your rhubarb? We sure do. We make uh, rhubarb crisp. We make um, punches with it. We make tarts. We, we use the rhubarb a lot. Do so. you collect it also and freeze it so that you have some Some in the winter, winter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting a little past its prime here, so in Alberta, the rhubarb, you know, is really good in June, and here it's it's going to seed by May, so it's just longer season, a lot longer season. Same with a lot of the plants you couldn't have hostas and stuff in Alberta. I'd never seen them till till here, and then I didn't even know what a hosta was. So, and now they're everywhere. So, you would have had a lot of interesting experiences, a lot of neat people through the house. Do you have uh, a particular memory of, of someone who? Made a lasting impression. Well, I always like it when people who've lived here before come, because I always think, how did they, how did they live here? What fun, what parties they would have had? So I always love it when people like you come, and then we get to compare stories and things like that. Especially people that were here as children. I want to hear their stories because someday that'll be my kids driving by and say, oh, I used to, I used to live there. And so that's the fun things I like is when people that used to live here um, come by. Do your kids generally um, feel positively about the house? I think so. I think um, when you talk to other people, um, I know the Moroni's children had a, had, a, had a wonderful time here and they were running around the house and, and, oh, I used to do this here and there and my grandma used to sleep there. They had wonderful memories. So I think people, you know, generally, the house is very conducive to family life. And so I think that when you live here as a family, you, you end up with lots of wonderful memories. Who have been some of the most memorable, well-known visitors that you've had? Oh, we've had, uh, I don't know, we've had different people for lunch, like, I don't know, we've had um, prime ministers, um, uh, presidents, um, uh, royalty has come, uh, different, it's hard to, I'd have to go through my guest books and you don't want to pick, pick a favorite. One of my, uh, the parties that I think was the most fun and involved the whole community was uh, a friend of mine was a neighbor of a father of an NHL player that was on the Mighty Ducks when they won the, the Stanley Cup. So he thought he was coming here to meet his parents and it was his day to have the Stanley Cup. And when he showed up, the driveway was lined with hundreds of children playing uh, hockey games. And so he carried the Stanley Cup up the driveway with all the cheering children and a lot of grown-ups, I must say, were excited. So. Um, we got to have a party with the Stanley Cup and there was I think three or four I have a big driveway so we could have lots of hockey games going on So we had three or four hockey games going on and all of a sudden it's like a beer commercial The Stanley Cup shows up at your party. So it, it was a lot of fun You seem like the type of person who is just very um, Relaxed about about things about life about you know, you you just kind of things will work out yeah. um, Do you ever find yourself as your you know, hosting a dinner for a president or a prime minister in a very beautiful home, thinking, 
this is may maybe not what I where I thought I would end up or this is not what I when I was planning forward this isn't what I was thinking I mean I'm from a very small town um, even smaller than when you where your dad grew up so I mean High River to me was a big town so I grew up in a very small working class town so this is the the last place I, I, I thought I would I never even thought of um, you know who plans for being here nobody plans for 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 it so uh, I mean I try to enjoy every day we try to in, invite as many people we have lots of people come by and they say they've lived in Ottawa their whole lives and never been here so we try to have as many people come through and charity events and uh, my neighbor from Calgary one time was riding with a bicycle charity across the country and we tricked the bicycle ride into uh, coming through the driveway and stopped and a lot of them didn't even know where they were they were like where are we so we did a big surprise so I love doing things like that and different charity walks sometimes we we surprise the people and have them walk through the through the driveway and stuff like that just as a little bonus for the for the people and their and their charity so those are those are fun ones to do too to surprise people all right a final question pets yes. everyone knows that you have a, a great fondness for animals yes uh, is this a conducive environment for animals too it is because on the third floor we have a room that has no furniture nothing in it and uh, and just a hardwood floor and so we keep our uh, the uh, foster pets when we get from the Humane Society we end up fostering kittens or guinea pigs or you name it if there's an animal that needs to be looked after we'll 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 take it so we're lucky here that we have a whole room one time I was at the Humane Society just waiting to bring I think I had two holders with 12 little kittens and this person said boy I hope you live in a big house <laughs> and I said yeah don't worry I do so it was just the person had no idea who I was or anything but they just wished I had a big house to look after all those kittens I said yeah don't worry I have a whole room for them so <laughs> <laughs>